Hello, welcome back to the Real World Garage. Glad you could join us today. Today we're going to do a tool review of sorts. We're actually going to do a comparison of the free or free with coupon Harbor Freight digital volt ohm meter. This meter usually sells between six to ten dollars if you went in to buy it, but you frequently find it free with another purchase of a certain dollar amount with coupon at Harbor Freight. And we're going to compare it with the fluke meter because Fluke is known for their reliability, they're known for their accuracy and have been in the industry for a very long time. So we're going to do a quick comparison between the two. Okay, before we dive into this, one of the things that I wanted to mention was I just recently came back from a Ford sponsored training course and one of the things the instructor stated specifically was when you're testing anything on these new Fords to not use a Harbor Freight meter. Make sure you're using a good quality Fluke brand meter because he said on, the, on modern electronics, and it is very true, modern electronics accuracy really matters. But my point in doing this review is is this meter good enough good enough to do some work on basic maintenance, uh, checking for voltage output of an alternator, uh, possibly say you're gonna you're working on something that was built in the 70s or 60s. Is this meter good enough to, to provide you with the information that you need to repair the vehicle? So let's let's go ahead and we're gonna jump right in. Okay, we're going to start out with a very basic test. I have a 12 volt automobile battery that I recently charged. It came from my son's car on one of the last videos we did when we Datsun, where we did the alternator and starter. The battery has charged up and it's proven to be a good battery. So we're going to move on and we're going to check the resting voltage of this battery and we're going to compare the two meters and see the two readings that they give us. Let's turn on our fluke. Let it boot up. And we have on the Harbor Freight meter, it is set to the 20 volt scale, which will read 20 volts and down. Um, just flip it on. The um, Fluke is an auto ranging meter, so it will automatically adjust and you don't have to make a selection on it. All right, 12.66 volts is what the Fluke says. Let's see, let's compare the accuracy with the Harbor Freight. Okay, it is a full tenth of a volt higher. Alright, so there is a difference in accuracy there. Alright, let's set up another test and uh, I'll bring you right back. Okay, we've got our meter set to the millivolt scale on both meters. And I have it, uh, have both meters hooked to an oxygen sensor at the same time. It should give a millivolt signal. So we're going to heat that, heat it up, and watch the scale change. Let's heat it up again. It's moving around. Both meters are staying very close. There we go. Something happened to the fluke. Maybe uh, connection. It's not making a good connection. Which is an uh, operator error, not a meter error. I would say on this test it's staying, uh, they're staying right neck and neck. They're staying right together. 
the accuracy looks really good to the Harbor Freight. All right, well, let's set up and we're going to check ohms of resistance next and we'll see how that, that test fares. Right, the next item I have set up is a camshaft position sensor and uh, it is scaled when I tested it around 2000 ohms. So let's take a look. We got my leads hooked up. Careful not to let them touch. I'm going to start with the fluke. And it's coming in at 2047 ohms of resistance. Alright, well, let's check the Harbor Freight meter. set on the 20,000 ohm scale and you set it on the 2,000 ohm scale it auto ranges out so you move to the next scale and it's 2.03 which you convert it and that's 2,030 ohms so this meter is not going to give you as fine a range or a fine adjustment so that you can get a, a really pinpoint accurate, but you can get close. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, we'll set up our next next test. Okay, so for our next test we're going to go ahead and we're going to check continuity. Uh, continuity test is just to see if you have a continuous circuit complete loop. So we're going to take headlight bulb and we're going to run it and hook it up and see what we get. Okay. So it shows that we do have continuity. Alright, let's see what happens when we put the fluke on. Wait a minute, can y'all hear that? Very nice feature of a fluke meter. On a continuity test, sometimes when you're doing a test on a vehicle, you can't always be where you can see the meter. But you can hear that usually. So if you're in a confined space, you'll get a continuous beep. Then that tells you you have continuity. Now let's move to the ohm scale. While the continuity test does give a reading in ohms it's not very accurate so we're going to move like I said move over to the uh, ohm scale let's turn it to the this is 0 to 200 on the, on the Harbor Freight but since we already have the fluke in our hands we'll go ahead and see what the fluke does okay Alright, now let's move to the Harbor Freight and see if it gives a similar reading. The ohms of resistance this little light bulb's got. It says it's 2.5. So compared to the fluke, let's go back to the fluke. Come on, fingers. It says it's three ohms. It's, well, it's fluctuating between two to three ohms. So anyway, you can see that there is a slight difference. All right, guys, for our final test, I have hooked up a battery charger to the, to the first battery we tested with and uh, we're going to do an accuracy test. As you can see, the fluke meter has the battery being charged at 15.05 volts and the small meter, Harbor Freight meter, is at 15.15 volts. It's about a tenth of a volt different on the off on the volt scale. 
that really going to matter that much in the whole scheme of life? Is that going to change something? Not on an older vehicle. It potentially could cause you to have a bad reading on a new modern vehicle where they're measuring uh, with micro bolts on some things now. So uh, let's, uh, let's do a quick wrap up and I'll give you my opinion and tell you what I think about the uh, Harbor Freight Meter. All right, guys, we're uh, gonna roll the, roll this thing up and uh, close it out, um, and I'm gonna give you my opinion. Um, my opinion is, if you're a professional mechanic, you should have a fluke meter in your toolbox. Um, when accuracy matters, you're gonna wanna use a fluke. Now, with that said, even as a professional mechanic myself, I have a Harbor Freight, one of the free meters, that I use and keep in my junkyard diving toolbox. So if I go to the junkyard and I need to test a sensor or something, I can at least see, get a quick reading on it and get an idea if it works or not. Um, for around home DIYers, this is a perfect meter. Working on an older vehicle, or even working on a newer vehicle, if all you're doing is checking the charging system, you wanna know what kind of voltage the system's putting out. Um, you want to check a few a few things on the vehicle. I don't know that I would check any computer circuits with this meter. I don't know that I would trust it. Um, I don't know that it's accurate enough, and I don't know exactly what could happen to the computer if something shorted in this meter. Um, now, like I said, if you're working on an older vehicle, something with points of condenser even, even with some of the uh, modern uh, electronic fuel injection uh, back in say the 90s, 80s, this meter's probably been not probably not gonna cause you any problems. So this is a good meter to have around. It's a good meter to go knock around with. Uh, if it gets broken or lost, throw it in the garbage. If it breaks, you can go get another one for six bucks. I mean, come on, it's you know, no big deal. Um, but in my opinion, this is a good little meter. It's accurate enough to do what you need to do around the house. Thanks for coming to Real World Garage. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. There will be links to my Facebook page and my Instagram account down in the description.